as you are able, please kneel for a moment of silent prayer. Please rise. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he severed, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, 
they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 116. reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, 
One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than, than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. pray. Gracious God, help me to preach in a way that is good news to the poor, the meek, the widowed, the orphaned, and those who are most vulnerable. Help me to preach in a way that honors and respects those that will suffer and die today for your gospel. Help me to preach in a way that seeks not my glory, but yours, not the accolade of this church, but the spread of your kingdom. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, I am so glad we are present together in community as we travel this road of Holy Week. These services are ancient, and we are invited into a deeper communion with God and in closer relationship with your fellow sojourners of this path here in the pews beside you. We are also invited into fellowship with the church of the past, the church in glory, and the church of the future who will continue to worship God as we do tonight. This week is the holiest of our faith. These lessons are painful gifts. They are hard to hear. And if we stay present, they will change us. Our gospel today shows us Jesus teaching his disciples a very powerful and necessary lesson. This is Jesus' last meal before his execution. And he spends it teaching and sharing life with his closest companions. 
we feel like we are there at the table, don't we? I can imagine Peter sitting right next to me as he feels so vulnerable and embarrassed that his rabbi, his Lord, is removing his outer clothing and kneeling on the floor in order to wash Peter's dust-encrusted feet. I squirm right along with him. We humans can be so jumpy about having physical bodies, can't we? The first time my feet were washed by my priest, I knew what was coming, but I felt so uncomfortable seeing someone I respected peeling off the sock I'd worn for the past 12 hours and washing my toes. I found myself wishing I'd had a pedicure that I could somehow hide the nakedness of my toenails with some color. It is a discipline to allow someone to see you. And there's holiness in that raw vulnerability. In our gospel passage, Jesus models humility in leadership. And that leadership is synonymous with service to others. That none of us are more important than any other person. And also, that none of us are any less important than anyone else. Jesus is also calling his followers then and now to be vulnerable, to pause with our first reaction and practice saying yes, and to pay attention when our first inclination is to say, no way, not me, Lord. Jesus asks us again and teaches us that this submission, this willingness to be seen And to stay present is essential to our spiritual life. It is staying present to this vulnerability that gives us an incredible gift. The theologian Henri Nouwen phrases this so beautifully. Compassion asks us to go where it hurts. It means full immersion in the condition of being human. Jesus was teaching his disciples, and that includes us, how to be fully immersed in living a complete and rich life of love, the life for humanity that God intends for us. We need to go where it hurts. We need to pay attention to where it feels raw and uncomfortable, and to know that Christ, in his infinite compassion, is already here with us in this discomfort, holding our hand, washing our feet, and teaching us to live generously in service of God through the service of others. At this table of the Last Supper, Jesus shared a meal with everyone, knowing it was his last, knowing he shared the bread and wine with loving complicated, fallible people. Jesus served by doing the task that was considered culturally the grossest and one of the most demeaning in first century Israel. Peter heard what Jesus was teaching, and Peter eventually understood. And yet that night, Peter, in all of his humanity, denied Jesus three times. Jesus went around the table. He washed the feet of the disciple who loved him. He washed the feet of the one who denied him that very night. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him. Christ gave fully of himself in full knowledge of the betrayal and denial he would receive in the next few hours. But there was something present in the room at the Last Supper that was not mentioned in this passage of the Gospel. In the room, as Jesus washed feet, as Jesus taught and loved and shared bread and wine, as Jesus prayed, there was something else present. There was a sweet scent. There was a perfume of lilies that followed Jesus in all he said and did. It would be present with him as he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. The sweet note would still be with him as he is abused by soldiers and cross-examined by the Sanhedrin. There was a hint of it 
as he stood before Pilate. Just the faintest smell of lilies as he stood looking Pilate in the eyes in silence. Just a few days before the Last Supper and just before Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, Jesus had dinner in Bethany with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. At this meal, Mary takes an exorbitant amount of perfume, a pound of nard, which is an essential oil from a fragrant flower like a lily, and it pours it over the feet of Jesus and wipes his feet clean with her hair. I can easily imagine the looks the disciples were giving each other as Mary made such a gesture. It simply wasn't done. It was so showy. It was deeply and profoundly and comfortably personal to touch her rabbi's feet, to wipe them with her own hair. It was the greatest gift she could give. Her love, her presence, her devotion. Others saw and participated in this loving act through the beauty of the powerful perfume which permeated the room, the entire house, for days. Mary wished to carry the fragrance of Christ with her. And Jesus carried this gift with him. He saw the discomfort and judgment in side eyes of the disciples, and he remembered. And so still smelling like the lilies with which Mary anointed him, he kneeled at the feet of his disciples so they could learn and stay present and be transformed as he taught them that love serves others, that love is to be vulnerable. And the fragrance of love permeates a room. This fragrance of love speaks of Jesus' anointing before his burial and the promise of what happens after Jesus dies. Christ, fully God and also fully human, is the embodiment of love. God's love is so large that by Christ submitting to death, death itself was destroyed. For death cannot hold God. Love is is stronger than death. My friends, when you leave the nave this evening in reverent contemplation, pause in the narthex. Take a deep breath. Do you notice the smell of lilies? This is the fragrance of hope that in the midst of despair, and separation and broken hearts, there is a perfume of God's miraculous promise that Easter is coming. God is the fullness of love, and death cannot stop love. Jesus taught us to live fully and honestly in relationship with others. God, give us your strength to be compassionate, to stay present and not run from where it hurts. <sighs> Teach us to live as poured out offerings of fragrant perfume upon your feet. The fragrance of your love permeates the world. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in the life of the reign of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. We all need to remember his example, but none stand in more need of this reminder than those whom the Lord has called through the people of God to the ordained ministry. Therefore, I invite you who share in the royal priesthood of Christ to come forward that I may recall whose servant I am by following the example of my master. We all need to remember his example, but none st stand in more need of this reminder than those whom the Lord has called through the people of God to the ordained ministry. Therefore, I invite you who share in the royal priesthood of Christ to come forward that I may recall whose servant I am by following the example of my master. We all need to remember his example, but none stand in more need of this reminder than those whom the Lord has called through the people of God to the ordained ministry. Therefore, I invite you who share in the royal priesthood of Christ to come forward, that I may recall whose servant I am by following the example of my master. But come remembering his admonition, that that which is done for you must also be done by you to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. as you are ready to please come forward.
I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Archbishop Justin, for our presiding Bishop Michael, and our bishops Andrew, Jeff, Kay, Hector, and Scott. We pray for this gathering and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. Pray for the church.
I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, praying together for those in our parish prayer list. Annie, Bill, Bonnie, Carol, Doreen, Donna, John, Joseph, Oliver. O oh Lord, our God, accept the prayer and prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good evening. There I am. Welcome. Welcome to those of you who are here. Welcome those of you who have joined us online. What a blessed beginning of Holy Week this last Sunday was. And as we go deeper and deeper into this week, we feel the solemnness and the sacredness of this time. We will be having Eucharist and then we will be reserving that Eucharist in the altar of repose in the parlor overnight. There is someone signed up to, for every hour of the watch from 9 o'clock tonight through 3 in the afternoon tomorrow. But there are lots of spaces that if you would like to join someone else in there, in there for a devotion time, that you're welcome to sign uh, in and take part in one of those hours. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Receive, O Lord, these gifts presented by your people for the work of your church. Amen. Great Thanksgiving is Prayer B, found on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer, page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we, uh, therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Gifts of God for the people of God. Take, Take them, them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Whoever Yes. Mm -hmm. 
life to the world. Whoever reads this bread will live forever. Whoever believes in me shall not hunger or thirst, for the bread which I give for the life of the world is my flesh. Whoever reads
continues on page 366 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Let us join together in the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Almighty God, in union with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. As Jesus Christ has taught us, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Since we cannot receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, we beseech you, O God, to bind us together through your Spirit. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, that we may become one body and one Spirit. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.
God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my God? And from the words of my distress, O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh at me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of flesh surround me. They open wide their jaws at me, like a gravity and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in. And gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dogs. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild wolves. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him. O offspring of Israel, all you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. But the poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done.
Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly, I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand.